بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين All praise and thanks belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and may the peace and blessing of Allah be upon his servant and final messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam As to our followers, my dear respected brothers in Islam I subhanallah I had a topic to share but I don't think I'll finish it in time because I have to be somewhere but inshallah ta'ala I'll just give something يعني, very short بإذنillahi ta'ala maybe inshallah uh, you know obviously we are in the, uh, in the on the 15th or probably today is the 16th day of uh, of Shawwal the 16th day of Shawwal subhanallah almost uh, two weeks have gone by since uh, Ramadan has finished uh, so يعني, subhanallah if you still see the people uh, they're their, their profile and masajid still have some some pictures stuck on the wall Allahumma balighna Ramadan oh Allah allow us to reach Ramadan Ramadan finished very quickly Shawwal almost half of it has finished people haven't even had time to change the profile picture people haven't had time to take those uh, signs off the wall time goes very quick and just like Ramadan finished Shawwal will finish and just like that you and I our life will finish as well if, uh, what comes after Ramadan and يعني, in this blessed month of, uh, of Shawwal is a great worship that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us. Obviously, you and I know about it. And that is the six days, the six days that are voluntary to fast of Shawwal. Uh, يعني, for some, have finished these six days. Alhamdulillah, may Allah azza wa jalla accept from them. And there are others that haven't finished these days. They're still uh, يعني, fasting these days, but they haven't finished it. And there are some... Subhanallah, that haven't even started these six days altogether. And they're between should I start and should I not? And as the days are, يعني, as uh, Maghrib pushes forward, you know, Shaytan begins to come to this person and already make him feel lazy and turn him away from fasting these six days. And there are others that haven't fasted them and cannot fast them because يعني, of a sickness they have or for some reason they have. Or ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give them cure from that sickness. However, and I wanted to share with you in four points, as mentioned by Imam uh, Abu Rajab, rahimahullah, why should a person fast these six days? In four points, and we can learn other things from them as well. For why should a person fast these six days? For the one that's already fasted the six days, needs to be conscious of these meanings. Number one, the first reason why a person should fast these days is because of the obvious hadith in their reward. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, <coughs> the one that fasts the six days of Shawwal, يعني, or the one that fasts Ramadan and follows it up with six days of Shawwal, كان كصيام الدهر. You know that. That it is equal to the to fasting. You complete the fasting of the year in terms of reward. You complete the fasting of the year in terms of reward. So it's 30 days plus six days Give you a, it gives you an entire year of reward of, of fasting. What does that mean? Does that mean يعني, خلاص, a person shouldn't fast after that because he's already earned the reward of a year? And if he does fast after that, does he get reward for that fasting or not? Of course, there is no يعني, objection between this and that. So that if one person was to fast the six days of Shawwal, he earns the reward of fasting an entire year. And any day he does after that is added on top of this. It's added on top of it. So for example, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, the one who fasts three days of every month, and he does it for every month, the reward of that is also as though he has fasted the entire year. Those, third, those three days, you know, are ayyam and bil, 13, 14, 15. And they also could be any three days of the month. If you couldn't do 13, 14, 15, then it's any three days of an Islamic Arabic month. So as a result, if one does Ramadan and six days and then did three days of every month, it goes all in together. This is the, uh, yeah, the reward is two years worth of fasting. <coughs> the reward is two years worth of fasting. Just like in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, and this is a misunderstood hadith sometimes, and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, that the one who prays Salat Al-Isha fi Jama'ah fakannama qama nisf al-layl. The one who prayed Salat Al-Isha in Jama'ah it's as though he earned or woke up, يعني, stood in worship, in prayer, half the night, and he earns that reward. And then the continuation, it says, وَمَنْ صَلَّ الْفَجْرَ فِي جَمَاعَةً فَكَأَنَّمَا قَامَ اللَّيْلَ كُلَّهِ And the one who prayed Salat al-Fajr in Jama'ah, it's as though he prayed the entire night. So therefore, some understood that 
half the night is for Isha in Jama'ah and the other half is for Salat al-Fajr in Jama'ah. But that's wrong. Salat al-Isha in Jama'ah earns half the night in reward and Salat al-Fajr earns a complete night of reward. And a complete night of reward. So in other words, the one who prays both of them in Jama'ah earns one and a half nights worth of reward. One and a half nights. And there is no problem that يعني, the reward overlaps itself. Just like we're saying in these six days. And then if one was to fast after this, then يعني, he earns one yi uh, of reward worth of fasting. And then after that, it is added on top of يعني, his account for whatever fasting he did. So that's the first reason for why one is to fast them. Because it earns him a complete uh, forgiveness. Or it earns him a complete reward of one year of fasting. Number two, al ulama rahimahumullah mentioned that fasting after Ramadan is a sign of an accepted tawbah. al ulama rahimahumullah they said, alamatu al-qabool, alamatu al-qabool, al-ibadatu ba'd al-ibadah, right? So the sign of an accepted worship is a worship that follows a worship. It's a worship that follows worship. So if you followed up the fard of Ramadan, with fasting six days of Shawwal, this is a, a very good sign that Ramadan was accepted. If one was to pray, uh, Salat al Dhuhr, and then got up and prayed the Sunnah after it, this is a good sign that his Salat al Dhuhr was accepted. And so on with all the worships that we have, when you follow them up with another worship of a similar kind, then this is proof that such a worship has been accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For this is why يعني, when one does these six days, he should feel as though يعني, بإذنillah, this is the sign from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to him that his Ramadan has been accepted. This is why as we move forward in these points, two more to share, you'll find the need of a person fasting these days and not turning, يعني, turning away from these days. So that's number two. Number three, uh, al-ulama rahimahumullah, they said that the six days of Shawwal, they equal to يعني, a sunnah ratibah after the fard. It acts as the sunnah after the fard. So what does the sunnah after the fard do for a person? What's the use and what's the benefit and the purpose of it? Basically, the purpose of a ratiba, a sunnah, that comes straight after the fard is so that sunnah can clear up and clean the shortcomings and the faults and the problems you had in the obligation. That's the purpose of a sunnah ratiba. So for example, we'll speak about the salat one. So when one prays a salat, and then follows it up with a sunnah. Basically, the idea behind this is that, Oh Allah, my salat al-fard wasn't perfect. It wasn't the way you deserve. No one would ever dare to say that my salat al-dhuhr, for example, was perfect the way Allah wants. So you get up after it and you pray two rak'at in hope that, Oh Allah, these are two rak'at I offer. Clean up my fard and rectify it and perfect it and complete it with this sunnah that I offered right after it. And this is why Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says in the authentic hadith that when the servant is held accountable for his deeds and he is asked about his obligatory salat, he's asked about it and it comes and it is imperfection, it's incomplete. For Allah Azza wa Jal, he says to the angels, Unvuru hal abdi min salati He says to his servants, to his angels, look into the record of my servant. Is there any voluntary salat he's performed and made? If he has, bring it. Allah Azza wa Jal adds it onto the scale in where the obligatory deeds are and it completes it, it will perfect it. As a result, a salat is accepted from him. Then a siyam comes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala judges him according to the obligatory siyam. So it comes incomplete, it's not perfect, there's shortcomings in it. For Allah Azza wa Jal, he says to the angels, Look into the record of my slave. Does he have any voluntary fasting? If he does, Bring it, it's placed on the scale, it perfects, it rectifies the shortcomings and the problems in his fasting. It's complete, was siyam is accepted from him. And as zakat and al hajj, yeah, I need the same thing for all the obligatory uh, deeds that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has obliged upon us. Fa now you almost see the reason why one is, is, it's just not impossible for a believer to leave these six days as yeah, I mean, this is the, the kind of reward and the kind of uh, yani benefit that comes out from these days. The last and final one of them, this is very important to understand, as mentioned, uh, yani they said that, understand it properly, this is why I left it to the end, that one of the greatest 
if not the greatest reward of Ramadan and the greatest prize that was given to a believer during Ramadan was that he earns a complete forgiveness of his sins. This was the greatest, right? The greatest of all. And yani, it is highlighted in so many ahadith and each hadith is different to the other. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in one hadith says, Whosoever fasts Ramadan, Iman and Wahtisaban, Allah forgives his sins. Whosoever qama Ramadan, Iman and Wahtisaban, and he prayed at Taraweeh, qama Ramadan, Iman and Wahtisaban, as well, Gufira lahum at the Qaddam in Dhambi, complete forgiveness of previous sins. Man qama Laylat al Qadr, as well, Iman and Wahtisaban, Gufira lahum at the Qaddam in Dhambi. Will a hadith in that recur over and over again? So the main grand prize for a believer is to come out of this month. And he has earned a complete forgiveness of sins. Now, obviously, if one earned a complete forgiveness of sins, there are other benefits that follow with this, like being freed from the fire, uh, elevated <coughs> ranks in the paradise, earned hasanat, and so on. But the main and the essential prize and the grand reward that is given to a believer at the end of the month is that his sins are completely forgiven. So on the day of Eid, it was yani mustahab, it was liked for him, to make a takbir. A takbir is like a form of congratulations, a form of takbir, a form of excitement and happiness and celebration. First and foremost, over the fact that Allah has forgiven you for your sins. And the second is for this day, this celebration, blessed day that Allah Azza wa Jalla has given us to celebrate, right? For this is why al, al, yani celebration on the day of Eid and enjoyment and happiness on the day of Eid is a ibadah, it's a worship. One must celebrate, one must be happy. No, no, send uh, messages out. Yeah. How can one be happy on Eid when the Ummah is suffering? Or, yeah, and all this is, okay, it's fine and it's acceptable in that regard. Or may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ease the suffering of the Muslim Ummah. But you need to understand that the, the joy and the celebration on the day of Eid is, this is a wajib, it's an obligation. It's a worship. So don't mix two things in one. Well, yeah, and this is why Al Eid comes as a celebration first and foremost for this grand prize and reward that one has earned, which Allah Azza wa Jalla has completely wiped away and forgiven his sins. Now, as a result, when one is forgiven for his sins, he needs to do something. And the first thing he's supposed to do is shukr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thank Allah Azza wa Jalla for this prize and for this grand reward that he's given him. So when you fast the six days of Shawwal, what is that? That is basically, it implies this is my thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is my gratitude to Allah azza wa jal for forgiving my sins. And this is found in a perfect example in the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. For Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam one day, he's praying at night in the house of Aisha radiallahu anha. And after he finished his night prayer, as he's praying, he finishes his night prayer. Of course, you know, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the, in the narration, it mentions that his heel cracked and blood would come out of it. For, from how long he was standing, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So at the end, Aisha radiyallahu anha, she asks him and she said, yani, why did you, why do you spend the entire night praying like this, in this manner, for this long? وَقَدْ غَفَرَ اللَّهُ لَكَ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِكَ وَمَا تَأَخَرَ When Allah Azza wa Jalla has already forgiven you for all your previous sins and your mistakes and for whatever is to come in the future, clean that sin. Yani, what's the purpose of this salat? Yani this is just like someone that has come out of Ramadan and he is clean from his sayyad, absolutely no single sayyad left. So what do I do of that? Follow, look what Rasulullah did. He was praying, he was asked about his salat. What did he say? He said the answer and he said, Afala akunu abdan shakura. Shall I not be a grateful slave? In other words, he's saying to Aisha radiallahu anha, my salat is a form of gratitude and thanks to Allah because he has given me that complete forgiveness of sins. For you understand from this that when one fasts these six days, he says to himself and to his conscience that these six days are a form of gratitude and they are a form of thanks to Allah Azza wa Jal for giving me a complete forgiveness of sins. Almost with that kind of conscience and mentality, one is able to do these six days very easily and he understands the kind of importance that it has in his life. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, to forgive us for our shortcomings, for our sins. We ask Him subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from us 
يعني our fasting in Ramadan, our six days of Shawwal. We ask him subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us people of the Quran, people of the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Inna huwa liyu dhalika wa qadir wa alayhi wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.